Uh, Niran Basun Timman left Iraq in 1973. Her family was among 3,000 Jews desperate to flee the terror of Saddam Hussein's regime. In 1948, there were almost 140,000 Jews, comprising a fifth of Baghdad. Today, there are five. Niran. Good evening. I just wanted to comment uh, to what uh, Rabbi Dweck said. Um, a very well-known Iraqi journalist who is Muslim was interviewed recently in an Iraqi station. He was asked, when would you go back to Iraq? His answer was, when the Jews go back. He asked him, the guy said, why is that? He said, then the land will have prosperity. I am the descendant of an ancient community who lived in Mesopotamia over 2,600 years. The majority of Jews, around 125,000, left Iraq between 1950 and 1952. The situation of the Jews in Iraq had its ups and downs, but it soared after the Six Days War in 1967, and especially when the Ba'ath Party headed by al-Bakr and Saddam, took over in July 1968. To strengthen their position, among other actions, they arrested many Jews in Baghdad and Basra, accusing them of treason and spying for America, Britain, and Israel. The whole community was terrorized. They did not know when and who next would be arrested or disappear. I was only 11 then, but I felt the tension on my parents, actually on everyone. Many people lived on tranquilizers. 27 of January 1969 was the worst day for the Jews of Iraq, when the bodies of nine Jews were displayed in the central square of Baghdad, and three others were displayed in Basra. The idea of staying in Iraq became unbearable. Many people started escaping through the northern borders to Iran. It became very stressful even to go to school and study. Classes in Frangini school, usually having about 60 pupils a year, started shrinking dramatically because many people were escaping. So within a few months, classes shrank to 20 or even less. It became very depressing. My brother, who is eight years senior, my senior, and who was a graduate from Baghdad University with no prospect to work, wanted to escape like many of his friends. My parents could not stop him, and despite the danger, they had no option but to accept the reality and take the risk. But changes in the law came to the rescue when the Iraqi government announced that the Jews were allowed to apply for permission to be granted passports. After many months and numerous visits to the Iraqi Home Office and the Information Department, my brother was granted the permission. He traveled to the UK, but it took weeks to know that he arrived safely as communications were not as easy as today. We relied on letters which were intercepted and checked by the authorities. After experiencing the freedom in the UK, my brother wanted my parents to leave Iraq too, obviously using special coding in his letters. It was very difficult for my parents, who were in their 50s then, to leave Iraq where they lived all their lives and had a lot of memories. He insisted that if, if they, my parents, do not want to leave, then they should at least allow my sister and I, who were 17 and 16, to do so. After many attempts, my brother realized that the only way is by putting huge pressure on my parents. So he sent them a letter, 
and he told them that this would be his last letter until he receives a date that my sister and I would be traveling, traveling out of Iraq. His plan worked and prompted my parents to act, but there was a complication. One of my father's friends who had contacts with the authorities told my father that because of his fa my father's journalistic past, the authorities might refuse to grant him the permission to leave Iraq. So he was advised not to submit any application to, pass to get passports under his name as the head of the family because they will if they will refuse the application, no one of us will allow be allowed to leave the country. He suggested that my mother applies and includes my sister and me on the application because we were underage, send us abroad, and only then my father applies. This way, if he gets refused, at least my mother can use her passport, leave Iraq, and then he will escape through the northern borders. My parents took the advice, and when we were granted the permission, my parents were faced with another dilemma how to let my sister and I to travel when we were underage. Don't forget, at that time in Iraq, girls underage did not go anywhere without parents, parent, or an escort. The only option was if someone meets us in Turkey, which was the most common destination that the Iraqis went to at that time. They wrote to my brother, who was studying in the UK with, it, with limited financial capabilities. He borrowed money to buy a ticket to Turkey and asked his professor to postpone the submission of his work. And after his return, he took any available job, even as minor as filling sandbags for preparing for floods, so he can return the loan. We did not know all this until years later. The evening before our travel from Iraq, my sister and I were visited by our classmates. Every single classmate arrived apart from Joyce Kashkush, who shared the desk with me. I was surprised, upset, and even cross. We traveled the next morning and arrived to Istanbul where we were met by my brother. Later that evening, we learned that the whole Kashkush family, five of them, including my classmate Joyce, was butchered and put in the suitcases they were planning to travel with a few days later. I hated myself for being cross with Joyce, Zikhon Alivracha, when she was in fact dead. We stayed for three days in Istanbul, and we flew to Israel when my brother made sure that we are on an Al Al flight. As he promised my mother, he will receive us in Istanbul and deliver us to safe hands. When we disembarked in Israel, my sister and I were approached by two men who addressed us by our first names, Kahraman, Niran, we just froze. Why these two people know our name? What do they want from us? That's it, we were caught, and they're gonna return us back to Iraq. What will happen to us? We completely forgot that we were in fact in Israel, and the fear we experienced in Iraq just took over. The two men realized that we were in a state of shock, so immediately they introduced themselves, they said, don't fear, I'm your cousin Sami. The other one said, don't fear, I'm your cousin Shlomo. My cousin Sami was a, an army officer, and Shlomo was a police officer in Israel. That's the reason they could get to the um, uh, runway tarmac. We were escorted through immigration, and when we uh, exited through the doors to the outside, it looked like there was a demonstration. We were overwhelmed overwhelmed with the number of relatives, my grandmother and my uncles, whom we never met before because they left Iraq in the 50s, so before we were born. There were cousins, second cousins, my parents' cousins, their children, everyone was trying to introduce themselves. And a Doris with Khalabuki. I'm Doris, your 
your father's uh, <coughs> cousin. And I did with Khalik, I'm with your cousin, and on and on and on. Um, obviously, we could not we could not take it all in. It's it was very emotional. But with all the excitement, we could not forget that we actually left our parents, whom we might never see again. And now that the three children have left Iraq, would this actually push them to leave Iraq as well to join us, or it would be it would have a, a negative effect on them, and they would feel that as long as we are safe, the rest it doesn't matter. What would my mother do if my father would be refused permission to leave? Would she fly and let him escape through the borders? What would happen if my father would be caught, imprisoned, and even maybe hanged? Would my mother return back to try to save him? And she will be imprisoned as well. We stayed with our mother, grandmother uh, in her one-bedroom flat in Israel, joined Ulpan and learned Hebrew and felt very pr proud Israelis. One morning, we received a phone call from my brother saying that my parents will be leaving Iraq to Turkey in the next few days and will arrive to Israel a few days later. And this is exactly what happened. So after more than a year, we were all reunited as a family. Thank you. <laughs>